Midnight Assassin. Yeah. It's a true story about someone who gets murdered in their sleep with an ax in like 1900 and everything that happens is they try to figure out who did it. And it's all like the original police records and uh, like documentation from the trial and everything. Cool. Is it like, um, is it like a novel or is it more of like a documentary type book? It's a, it's a novel. They totally write it as a novel, but it's with all like facts, like true things, if that makes sense. Uh, you should turn it back how you had it so you can see your bookshelf. Oh, you ah, almost dropped it. I've been working really hard. Oh, that's awesome. I like it. Thanks. I'm getting two more of the big ones. So if I get two more, they'll fill the whole thing. And now I, they're Ikea. And Ikea makes like add-ons for the top. So I'm going to go all the way to the top of the ceiling. That's Ooh, great. You're going to be like Belle. Yeah, that's my life goal. Will you get a ladder? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, you okay? I, I don't think I could like secure a ladder safely so maybe i shouldn't do that oh my god are we supposed to be wearing book club shirts i, I just always to... wear it oh shit hold on <laughs> mine's right upstairs i'll be right back Sorry. are we ready yeah yeah, yeah. we finished <laughs> it today i finished it yesterday actually technically it okay Overall thought. Actually, Liz, do a gist of it. Ten seconds. No, I hate this. I feel like I'm put on this. Pick someone else. No, it's your turn. No, I did the last one. I did the last one. Pick someone else. Kelly. Kelly. Oh, dang it. <laughs> you have to go. All right. Okay. Rugby team. They all jump on a plane to go play a match. Plane goes down in the Andes. They don't really know where they are. They're wearing like summer clothes for the most part. And some of them survive, some of them get eaten. Um, they're there for 72 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then a couple of them go off and cross the Andes to find help. And some of them make it out. And then it just talks about their lives after. Yep, and a lot about Nando's feelings. A lot of feelings were shared, and a lot of religion was talked about. That's true. And a lot of people were eaten. I will say I thought I didn't um, before realize how kind of religious rugby was, or like how it correlated before. I think I the, the um, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know everything, but I think that's the culture, like the his or the Latin American. Hmm. They tend to be Catholic, yeah. and they tend to be, um, from my understanding, they tend to be very, like, ride or die, and as a culture, I think um, religion's a big thing. Even today, I think it's still, like, hmm. pretty big. That was, that. That's interesting because that, that would make a lot of sense with how they kind of dealt with being through this traumatic experience like in there he says like they didn't go to therapy like they just relied on each other and like helped each other through afterwards mm -hmm. um, so was their team their team was the old christians was yeah. that religious or a catholic was school a wasn't it yeah it was a catholic school mm -hmm. yeah that's what i thought yeah and i don't think that in general and maybe i'm wrong but i didn't get the impression that in general like rugby was tied to religion or mm -hmm. like we were all raised Catholic, right? Like, it's not like a Catholic thing, but I think it's just like no. that school and the, the group that started that school was really into rugby from Ireland. And so I think that's why it's connected. Yeah, I'm just saying that I didn't see like the correlations between it before. Uh oh. Like how it related so much to religion in their stance. But anyways, that's a very small part of the book. Um, it, they eat people, which is really interesting. I thought it was quite disgusting to read, but like, you know, uh, it was like really hard to read at times, like talking about like the consistency and like warming it up and then like taking snacks for the hike. I was just like, ah. They were really oh, that, descriptive. <laughs> like the avalanche, when the avalanche comes, I thought that was because they didn't mm -hmm. outside when they died. Yeah. So they weren't frozen. That part was. 
And I know we've talked about this, but I think what disturbed me more than the eating people is like how they came to like disassociate the meat with people. And they said they were like bones lying around camp. Oh my like, it God. seems like they started out like burying people. Right? Like they did start yeah. burying people, right? Yeah, they buried and them at the beginning. I think the yeah, pictures like, were the most disturbing because it really humanized what Liz is saying in the sense of like you can be like there were bones about but then when you actually see the pictures with it and you're like oh there really are bones about they weren't like exaggerating or anything that's what bothered me yeah. it's one thing to say it, it's another to take a picture and have the proof right there well and that's where they just sat and hung out too they're just mm -hmm. chilling but then there's a spinal cord right there yeah and that's where they chilled like every day right yeah, yeah. And it's hard too, I think, because like I've obviously never been in that situation. So like you don't want to judge them. But at the same like that was just like the hardest part to read. I I do wonder though if it was because like mentally they had to think of it as just food to where like if they kept respecting it like body, it would have gotten to like really be a mind fuck. But I don't know. That was just kind of what I was thinking, like how they might have actually they're also really young too. I mean, yeah. they weren't like, they were just young guys. So like, maybe that's part of it too. Like the like late teens to early 20s, right? I think. Yeah. I mean, I just imagine them on the plane being a bunch of rowdy guys and they're 18, just out of high school or whatever. Yeah. So obviously they grew up a little bit during this whole time. But. Yeah. It's like incredible what they go through and how they deal with everything. Mm -hmm. I, for me though, like Nando is the guy telling the story, right? Who helped, who wrote the book, was one of the guys who survived. And just his like emotions through the whole thing got to be too much for me though. Yeah. He was very that. emotional. Okay, but to be fair, we're a pretty um, non-emotional group. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Be here. He might be on the normal side where we're all like, all right, just eat your sister and get over it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. We don't, t I don't, I guess I'm never like, how do you feel about it? Like feelings, I'm like, I don't know. You'll get over it. Or, yeah. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's more normal, but we were kind of sick of it. It was just a lot to hear constantly how much he loved everyone. And like, yeah. you're the best person ever. But like, no, the scene was filled with the best people ever. Like, if well, I was trying to, like, wouldn't you be like talking shit, right? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, but like Roberto over there, like, didn't pull his weight and like clean out the cabin, like, mm -hmm. the but fuselage. To, but you have to understand too. This is all happening in hindsight. Yeah, and they get out, and then you have to know your buddies are going to read this book. Like, you're not going to oh, survive right. a plane crash with somebody, have somebody else write a book about it, and not rate it. And they probably all, like, bonded. I mean, they went through, like, a life-altering thing all together, so they're probably very bonded to each other, so they probably do think that they're all, like, the best people. I mean. I don't know. I want to hear Roy's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Roy. <laughs> hey, who Roy was, Kelly? You have to explain this now. Um... Poor, I, like, Roy is my favorite person because he got his ass kicked when he was dying. Like, Nando's so nice to everyone else and is like, they're the best. And then, wasn't Roy, like, pretty young, too? He was the youngest, I thought. He was, yeah. like, on the younger side, if not the youngest. And he's, like, struggling, like, literally struggling physically. And he, like, fell down fetal position, like, this is your mentally defeated, emotionally defeated, physically, you're dying. And Nando's like, I'm gonna just beat the shit out of you. And then carry you back. Yeah, then he carried him back. Like, if that <laughs> isn't, like, the start of domestic abuse, I don't know what it, like, what? Like, I'm gonna beat you up and be like, I love you. I'm like, <sighs> now they're I, I don't like Nando after that. Like that chat, that page or paragraph or whatever was really hard to read. I felt really bad because Roy didn't want to go on that at all anyway. Like the hike out to the trans. He literally called a spade a spade and was like, I am not capable. Like I can't do this. I'm not helpful. This is 
a suicide mission for me and Nando was like keep walking and was like all mean to him the whole time but everybody else who's just doing nothing crying he's so nice to yeah. Roy actually does it and sucks it up and has a moment and he kicks him and I it was rude. we can get Roy on here and like and interview him be like what was Nando really like what was the scene really like yeah poor Roy probably needed therapy after that like he survived that survived the avalanche Got his ass kicked. No one else got their ass kicked. It was. I don't know. But I mean, I, I know, like, I get it. Like Nando, like the emotions, pro like the emotional side of it, probably wouldn't bother anyone else. You're right, Kelly. It's probably not as bad as we're making it out. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Sorry. <laughs> um, Okay, I do think that this, well, it was really, um, I thought eye-opening to read because I feel like even in daily life, you can kind of apply it. Like we have these ideas of what we can achieve or like what we can endure or whatnot. But I feel like this book really showed that like you're mentally and physically a lot stronger than you probably think. You know, so like now before I was complaining about, like the other day I was carrying a bunch of ice uh, I don't know why, but I always get ice out of my ice machine with my hands, and it was so cold. And I was running to get jumping in the sink, and I was like, you're such a baby. Nando lived in the snow for, like, two months. So I think it makes you appreciate things, and, like, be like, no, actually, I'm, I'm stronger than I think. That's what I had on my mind. Um, no, I still don't get ice. I don't pop ice cubes out of the ice tray because it's too cold. I don't like my hands getting cold. So I have a very aggressive ice machine. I guess I should clarify that. It spits out ice like a freaking bullet. And so then if it goes into the glass, it sprays water everywhere. And so now I just always get it with my hands and then put it in my bowl or my glass. Why don't you just put ice, in, ice in the glass first? <laughs> yeah, Andrea. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not an engineer and think of these things. <laughs> I don't water first. I don't know. Talk about Nando. Don't talk about me. <laughs> Madeline routinely throws rocks in ponds, and it's like, oh, why does it spray me? <laughs> I don't get it. I love Kelly's, <laughs> like, accent. Insulting that. <laughs> I'm glad I read the book. Like, I wouldn't I read it again, but I think it was an important book to read and, like, story to understand, especially because it's true. Like, I feel like I learned a lot. Like, not just about rugby, but also just like what people like went through. It's insane. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting just how they like, how they did survive. I mean, they, how they got water, how they um, like the climb back when they're like, every step was like so difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how well, like, yeah. like experienced people, experienced climbers want to have made the climb with all their gear on it at that time. Yeah, and, like, they had, like, these snowshoes made out of cushions, and... I mean, it definitely makes a comment on, like, um, humans' resilience and stuff like that. I would probably read it again, maybe, maybe, like, just the, the middle part, like, that part where they're actually there. Uh, that part. Yeah. I would read again. The life after part, I probably wouldn't necessarily read again, but overall... But you just picked your next book as Robert's side. So I feel like you have to. Okay, so you just mean that you're, you you're still think the story is really interesting, but you wouldn't necessarily read Nando's point of view again. Um, or like, <clears throat> so if this was a Netflix series mm -hmm. and they broke this up into episodes, I wouldn't watch the episode about anything until they like start getting on the plane and the delays start happening. Like until the ball actually, get I feel like there was a whole chapter of him like just talking about how hard his dad worked. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, not well, there's a, there's a chapter about rugby too, like each yeah. um, position or whatever, which, yeah, I don't know. I kind of skimmed that one. I think that mattered more to him because he was like evaluating the players as what they could do or like what they did in survival. Mm. 
Okay. I mean, that was the point of that, maybe, but I'm not. Maybe that would mean more to us if um, we were a group that was into rugby, but like, I don't even. I mean, I can recognize it, but I can't tell you like the rules and the position. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I skimmed that part too. Yeah. I would probably rate it a C plus, but I think okay. Uh, you can definitely tell he's not a professional writer, which is fine. I think it's like very much sticks to be a true autobiography, but I think that's why I probably wouldn't read it again. It's just like, kind of like you said, there's kind of additional stuff in there that I would skim over. But a really good story. I really liked it. I thought the story was really interesting. I think it would have been more interesting had he wrote it sooner after the whole incident, or I'd be curious more or less to see um what it was like like right then mm-hmm. i think it's yeah, in I mean, the epilogue it was like 30 years later oh get a lot of time to think and i mean it's interesting the human mind like will form like change memories for you so that you can deal with stuff or cope and mm-hmm. um <laughs> athena and so i <laughs> wish he would have wrote it sooner or like I wish it was like almost a compilation of interviews from like as he was coming home something like that but that's also why I want to read um Roberto's because it's a whole different perspective from according to Nando a whole different type of human like Roberto's probably more our speed like kind of like no I probably not as emotional and sensitive or so it should be interesting. The story is really interesting. I just think I would have liked someone else's perspective a little bit. Yeah. Or I would have, what's would the word? Related to someone without emotions more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, I would have rolled my eyes a little less. They could have done like one chapter from like Nando, Roberto, like kind of like that sort of pattern. That would have they been cool. make them all get together and write a book together. I would say through it, Roberto was probably my favorite. I thought that he was like, he had his a couple times where you were like, like, okay, Roberto. But I feel like overall, he was someone who was like always a very level headed and like trying to think um, cautiously, but also still like trying to get them out of there. After we read the next one, I'll be interested to see if we like different people. Yeah. Oh, that would be Nando awesome. talks about his favorite people. I'm sure Roberto has his own. Yeah. I I gotta say Roy's my favorite. Roy? Like oh. I, I I don't remember much about what he contributed, but I feel bad for Roy, so I really gotta like push for Roy. <laughs> the cousins were my favorite because oh, I forgot about them. Yeah, yeah, first of all, because they're cousins, right? Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and second of all, they like lead, they're like this group and they're always like in agreement and they kind of just take over leadership, which also resonate with, right? And then they like came up with all the inventions for how like the snowshoes and how to like turn snow into water and like everything. Like they would have died without the cousin. Oh, let me guess. They were the older ones too. Mm. They probably ordered the younger ones around. And they probably handed out a point system that meant nothing. How many points do you think the the folks on got when they survived? Right? Like I don't know. I'm not allowed to give out points. <laughs> I can't uh, make that call. Andrea, <laughs> who's your favorite? I don't know. I don't know if I had a favorite per se. You have to pick a favorite. I don't think Nando was my favorite. He was just not as relatable to my personality. Okay, well, we have to see your favorite. To see one. what Roberto says in his book, but I would probably say I don't know. I'd probably say Roberto if I had to pick one. Yeah, I didn't mind Tintin either. He was the guy that like went part of the way and then yeah, turned. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, "Oh, see ya." We need your food. Back. <laughs> I needed more clarification on that, like decision making process and that conversation. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you roll over in the sleeping bag and we're like, "Hey, we voted right <laughs> over here." <laughs> like, what? I feel like he left a lot out when it comes to stuff like that. But for sure, I don't know. I'm interested to see 
um, Roberto's side of it, and then we should watch the movie, too. Yes, we should. I gotta figure out how to do, like, a Hulu party or something, so we can all watch it. Mm-hmm. I know Netflix does it, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah, there's something for Netflix, but... I heard that you can, like, type, too, and, like, you can see, like, notifications pop up when you're oh, watching cool. it. Cool. Uh, I'll figure it out. I'll try it. Yeah. I thought we could do that for Hocus Pocus next weekend. So yeah. what, are, what is the letter grade across the board? Madeline gave it a C. I said C plus. All right. I'll do a, I'll do a B plus. B plus? C mm-hmm. plus, B plus? Call it B. Go, I'd probably go C. There were a lot of times I was like skimming parts mm-hmm. and slightly bored. Don't think I would read it again unless I like somebody wanted to watch the movie and then I would want to read it just to you were bored with the book about people living in the Andes eating each other I don't I there was just a lot of like extra discussion that I definitely skipped like rugby and the like I don't a lot of the religious like there's a lot of talk about religious when something would happen and then they would go into it a lot yeah so like the part where they're actually talking about what they're doing and surviving, that part was good. But the other parts definitely skimmed a few chapters. Interesting. Well, I think that's a wrap. That's a miracle in the Andes. Yay. Roberto's next. But Roberto's not next, is he? Is he oh, next? no. No, one book and then that okay. one. Uh, all the light we cannot see is right now. Oh, I got it. I'll text you the reading for next week. Okay. All cool. right. See you guys. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.